Today I'll be talking about management tips for new winter wheats and what we'll primarily be talking about is what is the best time to sow them and which cultivars of the new wheats perform best in which environments. So to summarise, the best yielding at all of the sites yield as well as our May sown spring wheat control, which is septa sown on the 1st of May. What changes at each of the site is which of the cultivars that we have in our set that performs best, and that's mainly determined by the yield level of the site. So when sites are yielding less than two and a half tonnes per hectare, the cultivar Longsword, which is a fast winter wheat, comes to the fore and yields the highest. When we move to higher yielding sites, above two and a half tonnes per hectare, the mid-slow winter cultivar DS Bennett delivers the highest yields. The only exceptions to these are in very frosty sites that have low yield, where Bennett also performs best because it's avoiding frost, and the mid-north of South Australia where the mid-fast cultivar Illibo performs quite well. The other notable thing that we've found is that yields are maximised for winter wheats when they're sown in the month of April. We've also been sowing them in early May and the middle of March, but yields start to drop off when you either sow them too early in March or you're sowing them too late in May. So the month of April is the sweet spot for winter wheats, particularly if you're going them for grain only. The other things we've been looking at is what other sorts of management that we should put with this new system. We've been looking at reducing sowing rates from around 150 plants per metre squared to 50. We've been looking at deferring nitrogen, so not putting it up front at sowing, but top dressing it during early stem elongation. And we've also been looking at defoliation to simulate grazing. And what we've shown is that reducing plant density gives you a small yield increase, 0.2 of a tonne per hectare on average but it reduces the amount of early dry matter. So if you're looking to graze these winter wheats for dual purpose, then that may be of concern. Deferring nitrogen has no net change, but there's a site interaction. So at our very low rainfall site, you're better off having nitrogen up front because you might not get more rain to wash the nitrogen in later on. Whereas at our high yielding site, there was a small yield benefit from top dressing the nitrogen and defoliation to simulate grazing routinely reduced yield slightly, but there was a cultivar interaction and the cultivar longsword was able to recover more yield from defoliation than either Kitty Hawk or DS Bennett. We're hoping growers take away from this some good rules of thumb around how to manage the new set of winter wheats. So plant them in the month of April, choose the right cultivar for your environment, a mid-slow if you're in the, the mid-high rainfall zone like Bennett or Longsword if you're in the fast and the sorts of agronomic, agronomic management packages they need to put around them to maximise yield. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.